Lately, it feels like all of the flagship phone upgrades are reaching a maximum capability point where none of them are really upgrading by much year over year. The battery life always continues to be great. The screens continue to be great. They have a slight bump in nits in terms of how bright it can get. The cameras always get a slight bump year over year as well. But at the same time, for the most part, all of these are reaching a maximum level where there's not really much change. So to combat that, a lot of these companies now are adding slightly gimmicky features. You have Apple ProRes Log, you have the Samsung 100X Zoom, and you have the Google Pixel launching with a thermal or thermometer within the phone itself. I personally feel like for the main market, all of these features aren't going to be really great. No one's really going to be using them week over week. They are definitely something that is great for specific use case scenarios. But for the majority of people, they're not really something that you're going to be using every single day. Now, something that is going to be usable every single day is going to be new AI features. And luckily, I feel like Android and Google have done really well at introducing new AI features as the years go by, starting with the Magic Editor a couple years back from Google. Now, new AI features are actually being introduced to other Android products such as Samsung, Samsung launching the S24 Ultra, with that Samsung AI in partnership with Google, some of the features are being crossed over together. And we're at the point now where a lot of these features are going to be starting to roll out into other Android phones as well. And Google is one of the companies now that is known for running AI features on their latest phones. And ever since I picked up the Pixel 8a, I have been enjoying some of these features, especially when it comes to doing repetitive tasks and making them easier because it is something that's going to be helpful. It's going to save you a lot of time, especially for someone that likes to research things before you buy something. You can look up a lot of reviews, summarize them and plenty of other features that Gemini can do now in the new Pixel phones. And if you are new to Google Pixels, here are a couple tips that I I think you need to first change on your pixel to also better your experience overall. The first one is to always add or turn on the 120 hertz display. For some reason, some of the Google pixels actually don't come with this feature on automatically. So just go into your settings, turn on the higher refresh rate for the screen, and that's going to make your experience just a little bit better, especially for someone that's sensitive to whenever you're scrolling and getting that ghosting effect. And then the second feature that you can use within a Google pixel phone, if you're someone that uses a Mac or a laptop that doesn't really have that great of a camera, you can always use your Google pixel as a webcam. You simply have to hook it up via USB-C and then whenever it comes up, make sure you click on the other options for the USB that's connected to your device. And here you can choose to use it as a webcam rather than just charging your device. So this also allows you to use a better camera on your MacBook and you don't have to own an iPhone. You can just wire your Google Pixel and use that camera instead. And then a feature that actually always comes on pixels is a now playing feature. So whenever you're in your lock screen, you can actually see what music is playing. So you no longer have to Shazam a music or a song whenever you're at a store or you're just out and about and you hear a song that you really like. If you simply just look at the lock screen, it'll already show you what song is playing without you even asking it. But if you're someone that actually doesn't like this feature or for some reason want to turn it off, you can go into the settings and turn this feature off so that it doesn't show up on your lock screen. And if for some reason you're also not really into AI and you'd rather turn off Gemini and go back to the old Google Assistant, you can also do that as well. Gemini is going to offer a lot of features and I'm going to be talking about everything that you should be using because it's going to save you a lot of time. But if you're just not into AI and you just want your old Google Assistant back, you can still do that. You can just go into the Gemini app and if you click on settings, it'll allow you to choose what assistant you want to use. So you can just roll back to Google Assistant instead of using Gemini. But now on to all of the features that Gemini offers. It does offer quite a bit. My top two features that I use all the time is summarize and circle to search. For summarize, you can summarize any article or any YouTube video. So you can simply go onto Chrome. As long as you're in Chrome, you can open up a YouTube video attach it to whenever you go into Gemini and ask it to summarize the video and it'll summarize it for you. This works the exact same whenever there's an article that you're reading. If you just attach the file and then you ask Gemini to summarize it, it will summarize it into bullet points so that you don't have to read the whole thing. And then circle to search is another feature that has been talked often. It's a feature that launched in 2024, so it's understandable. It's a very nice feature that a lot of people are using. You simply open up Gemini and then you can search anything that is on the screen. You simply circle the item that you want to look up and then it'll pop up wherever you can purchase it and other things that have come up via Google search. Search. And like I mentioned earlier, Samsung is rolling out some of these features to all of its S lineup. So you can also use circles to search within a Samsung and you can also use it to summarize whenever you're in Chrome or Samsung AI also allows you to summarize any article whenever you're within the Samsung Internet. 
I personally like using it through Google Chrome just because that's my main browser of choice, whether I'm on my phone or I'm on my laptop. I do like that it syncs overall so I can use it on either one of my products. And then the other feature on Gemini that I think is really useful is to translate whatever is on the screen. You can simply open up Gemini and then circle whatever you want to translate and it'll translate it to whatever language you want it to. I think this is really useful if you are traveling to any other country where they speak a different language and you just didn't learn it. So instead you can just point it at a menu. You can point it at a store name or two directions and it'll lead you to wherever you want to go. And then the fourth feature, which I've really enjoyed using is to summarize anything that's going on through your emails, through your Google drive, really through your whole Google workspace. Gemini can search through all of your emails. And if you ask it a specific question, such as pull up my latest return, pull up my latest order. When is my order coming up? When were these tickets supposed to be for? All of those questions it can answer it'll look through your emails and it'll even bring up the exact emails i found the information in i personally really like this because it not only finds that information for you rather than you having to dig through all of your emails but at the same time it actually brings up those emails that way if you want to dig deeper or you want another piece of information you can always open up that email and then search through the email yourself as well and if you aren't seeing this option open or it's telling you that you can't do it, you do have to turn it on. Sometimes it comes turned off automatically. So if you again, if you just go into your settings, you click on extensions, make sure that the Google workspace is on. This will allow Gemini to search through your email, search through your Google Drive and find that information for you. But aside from Gemini, Google actually added a whole bunch of AI features within the photo apps itself as well. And luckily, none of the photos actually have to be taken with the Google Pixel. As long as they're within your photos library, you can make some of these edits to those photos, even if they're older photos from different phones or from years back. Now, one of the features that you can use is turning any of your photos into a portrait photo. I really like this because I remember way back then when I had the Galaxy S8, I used to not be able to take portrait mode photos. That was a feature that came out with other phones later on. And that was a feature that I really wanted to use. Now, luckily you can go into any of them. Even if you accidentally forgot to turn on the portrait mode, you can use Google AI within photos to turn any photo into a portrait photo. You can also turn any photo into a cinematic photo, which adds an animation to your photo. This works really great if it's already a portrait photo or if there's only a single subject within the photo because it adds an animation to make it look like there's some movement. I think this is really great if you're posting a story onto like Instagram or something and you want to add a little bit of movement rather than it just being a still. This works really great. And again, it doesn't have to be a photo that you took with your pixel. It can be an older photo and it can even be from a different phone. And the next two features actually make the wolf fix it in post saying go from a production setting to the general public because it allows you to have some of those Photoshop skills and essentially use them within Google Photos by using AI. And the first one is going to be the magic eraser. This is really great if someone ever photo bombs your photo or you simply want a cleaner photo. You want to delete something that looks like a mistake. You can move it around. It'll give you different options that you can choose from. So you select the photo that you really like. And this has been on previous pixel lines as well. I think this is a really great feature because again it brings that photoshop skills down to the general public so you no longer have to pay for someone to photoshop or even yourself have to learn photoshop because that'll take a while so instead you can just highlight something and it'll fix it for you within the google photos app and the second feature is called the perfect shot this actually allows you to select the perfect shot as the feature is called within a group of photos this is really great because if you're taking a group photo sometimes someone's not exactly looking at the camera someone's looking off someone blinked there's always that shot that someone's blinked someone doesn't really like how their face looks in one shot where you like how you look in that shot so because of that perfect shot actually allows you to select different faces from a different amount of photos which allows you to either have your eyes open to have you look at the camera and it actually works really well for the most part i think this is really great for a lot of group photos or even if you go to like an event and you want someone else to take a photo of you if you just ask them to take multiple photos of you then you don't have to kind of rely on one specific photo. You can always just edit them together and put them to where every single person feels like their facial expression is the perfect shot. And even though these are not all the AI features that are offered within the Google phone, these are the ones that I am using right now. I do plan on making future videos on more AI features that are coming to the Android lineup, as well as hopefully some of the iOS ones that come in later on down the road. So make sure you guys get subscribed if you guys want to know on how to use more AI features and what AI features are best to use within your phone. But that is all I have for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments what is one AI feature that you guys use that I didn't mention in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Click here to watch another one of my videos and I will catch you guys in the next one.